Hello everyone, welcome back to Speed. Still, if you are not subscribed, then do it quickly by pressing the subscribe button and support me. And don't forget to check out my previous videos by clicking the i at the top. So let us begin. In today's video, I will be starting with module 3, Environment and Ecosystem of Subject Energy and Environment. Before that, I would like to inter uh, present you a new logo of our channel, Speed Learning. So if you have not, uh, other than that, if you have not seen the previous videos of module 2 and module 1, please click on the pop up i button at the top so that you can access them and also watch other videos which are related to mechanical and other uh, interesting stuff you can learn. So let us begin with module 2, module 3, environment and ecosystem. Uh, by the, by lengthwise, this module is uh, small when compared to module two. So I have tried to complete. Uh, I have tried to cover the complete module in one video. So the contents of this video are environment, under which we'll be having definition, scope, need for public awareness. Then we have ecosystem. Then comes energy flow. Under that we'll be having five cycles, which are very important. Then is ecological succession. Then we have food chain, food web and ecological pyramid which are all important and then we have ecosystems, forest, grassland, desert and aquatic. Uh, from this there will be a one show question which is coming to be in this module for the final exam or any internals. So let us directly continue with the topic. Environment. So definition. Uh, uh, here are few definitions. It deals with each problem that influences on organism. It is essentially a multidisciplinary technique that brings about an appreciation of our natural world and human impacts on its integrity. It is an applied science as it seeks practical answers to creating human civilization sustainable on this planet's finite resources. Or in simple we can say that the surrounding and the conditions in which a person, animal or a plant lives or operates. So in simple words, uh, on the right side we can see the images, uh, we have a city, we have village and we have a jungle. So if you are living in a city then the environment around you is city environment or urban environment. If you are living in a village, the environment is a kind of a village environment. And if you are living in jungle, it's obviously not but it's a jungle or a forest environment. So environment in simple words is anything which is surrounding us and has an effect on our life or and in other in another direction even we living in an environment have some effects on the environment so let us now quickly look into the scope of environmental studies or uh, there may be a question asking write a scope of environmental studies surroundings were originally a natural landscapes like forest a river mountain desert or a mixture of those components most of us live in landscapes which have been closely changed by human beings. Daily lives are linked with our environment and inevitably influences them. Reliance on nature is great to the point that we cannot keep on living without ensuring ecological assets, which is a mother nature. On the other hand, effect of rapid financial boom and development brought about environmental degradation in the, uh, industrial improvement makes use of massive amounts of natural resources. So in simple words, why we need scope? Because we are the one who are living in the environment which is changing by ourselves for the betterment of our life. So in some uh, in some other ways, trying to make our life comfortable, we are destroying the environment which may cause us a future problems. So we should know what we are doing and we should know the effects of what we are doing. So for that reason, we should have the scope for environmental studies. Need for public awareness. Earth's res natural resources are gradually decreasing and our surroundings are being progressively degraded by human activities. It's evident that measures have been taken. Often we feel that dealing with all this is something which the government must do. Prevention of our surrounding degradation in which we should all have to take a part and we, uh, it should become a part of our lives too. As an individual, we are, we, were, uh, we, were, we are able to play a significant role in environmental management. It can be made conceivable through mass awareness. When people feel powerfully regarding the environment, 
the press and media can boost our efforts politician in a democracy respond completely completely to a powerful publicly supported movement one can join an ngo that supports the cause of conservation each of us in charge of spreading this message as many individuals as possible so need for public awareness so we should uh, most of the pe- uh, most of us are educated so that we know what will affect the environment but most of the people are not uh, they do not know the effects of what they are doing so we should make uh, we should make them aware that what's going to happen if they continue doing that uh, same bad things so for that reason uh, we should not be having the mindset that ev- all these things should be have to be done by the government uh, but we should have a mindset that we are the ones who have to keep our environment safe so, and also we should make that as a part of our lives and we should also create awareness among the people at least av- among the people who are around us in order to safeguard our environment prevent environmental degradation and uh, there are many ngos which are working for the betterment of the environment so we we, we can support them and we can make any movements uh, if the government is not taking any uh, what we say any kind of reaction so we can make a movement so that the government will come into the picture so everything should start with by ourselves so when we make ourselves helpful to the environment other people will follow us so that the environment will be safe for the future generation so there may be a one question most probably there will be a question on this need for public awareness so just go this uh, go to go through this point and write on your own energy flow every ecosystem has a several interrelated mechanisms that affect human life these are the water cycle the carbon cycle oxygen cycle nitrogen cycle and the energy cycle while every ecosystem is controlled by these cycles in each ecosystem its abiotic and biotic features are the distinct from each others so here abiotic are non living things and biotic are the living things which are present in the ecosystem so here we have water cycle carbon cycle oxygen cycle nitrogen cycle and energy cycle among these cycles there may there will be at least one short question explain the work uh, explain any of this any uh, explain one cycle there may be at least one question from the cycle part first cycle is water cycles we have been learning water cycle from our primary primary education so uh, let me just explain the water cycle in simple words uh, i'll just read it when it rains the water runs alongside the flow and flows into the river it should be river not rivers or falls directly into the ocean a part of the rain water that falls on the land percolates into the ground water that is the water just gets inside the ground this this is stored underground all through the rest of the year water is drawn up from the ground by the plants plant life together with the vitamins from the soil that is the plant sucking the water through its root the water is transferred from the leaves as a water vapor and returned back to the atmosphere so during the life process of the plants the water which has been drawn from the ground is left left out to the atmosphere in the form of transpiration uh, we made a small experiment when we are in the primaries by covering the plant with the plastic cover so we can see the water wave uh, water vapor uh, water droplets on the cover so this is similar to that transpiration uh, because since after the transpiration since the water vapors are lighter than air the vapor will rise and form a cloud wind blow the clouds along the distance and once the clouds rise higher the vapor condenses and changes into droplets and then again we get the rain back so in the image we can see that sunlight evaporation condensation perspiration and from down to uh, above we have evaporation transpiration and here we can see infiltration that is percolation of water getting inside the ground and the ground water surface water so on so draw a simple block diagram also it's okay and then try to explain what is there here so this much is this much explanation is enough and the drawing is enough so there will be eight marks four marks will go for the drawing and four mark only four marks for the explanation so just try it in your own words or you will get at least seven out of eight 
Next one is carbon cycle. The carbon which occurs in organic compounds is included in both abiotic and biotic components of the ecosystem. That is, we living beings also have carbon and non-living things like stone, ground, fossil fuels also have carbon in it. Plants use photosynthesis for their growth and improvement. In this procedure, vegetation releases oxygen into the ecosystem on which animals depend on their respiration. Herbivorous animals feed on the plant cloth that is utilized by them for the strength and for their improvement. Both plants and animals release carbon dioxide during respiration. They also return fixed carbon to the soil in the waste they excrete. When plants and animals die, they return their carbon to the soil. This process completes the carbon cycle. So just look into the figure. We, here we see a sun photosynthesis. So carbon dioxide is present there in the atmosphere about 92% uh, or something. And the plants will absorb that carbon dioxide and produce go undergo photosynthesis through which we will get we animals will get plant so plants also respirate so they consume oxygen and give out uh, carbon dioxide which is went back to the uh, atmosphere so there is a small cycle and then the foods pro uh, produ food produced during the photosynthesis that is maybe sugar even sugar has a carbon dioxide c2h all those things so that uh, carbon in that forms gets into us that is the animals so we consume food from the plants so we get carbon dioxide into our body and when we uh, and we also do respiration so we intake oxygen and give out carbon dioxide so we we give out carbon dioxide in two forms one during the respiration other during uh, during our uh, excretes and even after we die we get into soil and the soil we leave out our carbon dioxide in the form of fossil fuels after the decomposition so these fossil fuels are used by transportation or factories which produce carbon in other forms like carbon dioxide carbon monoxide and so on so this is how carbon dioxide carbon cycle takes place from atmosphere to photosynthesis from photosynthesis to animals and animals and plants animals and plants to ground fossil fuels and to factories and carbon dioxide one cycle carbon plants animals respiration other cycle so just go through the sentence here and go through this di di uh, diagram so try to make this diagram in as simple as possible write the same words which are here uh, that's enough so main thing is respiration part and fossil fuel part that's enough and photosynthesis that's enough to get you full marks so let me continue with the next cycle next is the nitrogen cycle so this is the one tough cycles among these cycles so let me just explain it in a easy way carnivorous animals feed on herbivorous animals that eat plants when animals defecate this waste material into material is broken down through worms and bugs typically beetles and ants these little soil creatures break the waste material into little bits on which minute microorganisms organisms can act this material is hence separated further into supplements that plants can retain and use their development. In this manner, supplements are reused once again from the creature to plants. Thus, nitrogen cycle on which life is dependent is completed. So here they didn't explain neatly. So just let me explain using the graph here or the image here. So we know that the nitrogen is present in abundant in the atmosphere about 70%. So nitrogen fixation takes place two types. One is atmospheric fixation and, and other is uh, direct plants. So plants cannot take the nitrogen directly or animals cannot take the nitrogen directly, but we can take nitrogenous components. So what happens? So in the atmosphere, when the lightning happens due to the high temperature, the nitrogen gets converted into nitrogenous components. So that is, which is called nitrogen fixation. These nitrogenous components come down to earth through rains, so similar rains and this nitrogenous will uh, come inside the soil. So the plants will have something known as ribosium, some ribosious bacteria in their root nodules. So these bacteria will take these nitrogen nitrogenous components and produce ammonia, uh, produce ammonia. And this ammonia will then go into nitrifying bacteria, 
which are other type of bacteria so these ammo this ammonia which has been produced from ribosius bacteria is now converted into nitrites and nitrates so these nitrites are consumed by plants to produce proteins so similarly from animals body parts or animal decomposition and excretes animal body wa animal waste we also get nitrates so these nitrates will be consumed by plants to produce proteins proteins and then when everything dies so it will all go to the soil and in the soil we have denitrification bacteria so these denitrification bacteria will undergo a process called denitrification and they leave out nitrogen to atmosphere so the process goes like this nitrogen atmosphere lightning so it is nitrogen fixation then uh, rains down to soil in the form of nitrogenous components that is nitrous oxide and many other so the nitrogen fixing bacteria which is rhizobium something which is present in the root nodules converts this nitrogenous components into ammonia and the ammonia is then converted by nitrogen fixing nitrifying bacteria into nitrites and nitrates these nitrates are consumed by plants to produce proteins protein will get into animals and animals excrete and they die from their dead bodies and the excretes denitrifying bacteria will produce nitrogen so this is the cycle of nitrogen just go through the image if you still didn't get there are separate videos which are made on nitrogen cycles just go through them so you can score better marks if this comes in exams please try to skip this and write the other part so which may uh, contain easy question or else try to understand the process next one is oxygen cycle which is the easiest one if you know about photosynthesis then that's oxygen cycle so the oxygen cycle is a biochemical cycle that portrays the development of oxygen inside and between three principal components or stores that is the air biosphere and lithosphere the fundamental driving element of oxygen cycle is photosynthesis which is responsible for the modern earth's atmosphere and life plants are main creators of oxygen within the atmosphere through the photosynthesis here the tree makes use of daylight and carbon dioxide to produce energy and releases oxygen the animals breathe in oxygen and then breathe out carbon dioxide the plants can then use this carbon dioxide and the cycle is completed simple oxygen in atmosphere plant takes plant oxygen is present there in the atmosphere animals breathe atmosphere leave out carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is consumed by plants and sunlight is also consumed which produces oxygen that's that is the simple cycle which is oxygen cycle so read out these sentences look into the diagram make a simple circular diagram or a block diagram in exam write the sentence and you will get a full marks next topic is energy cycle the energy cycle is based totally on the flow of energy on the surroundings energy from sunlight is transferred via plants into developing new plants fabrics which includes leaves plants fruits branches trunks and roots of vegetation referred to as producers in the ecosystem the herbivorous animals feed on these plants the carnivores in turn depend on the herbivorous animals which they feed thus unique plant and animal species are linked to one another through food chain the energy in the ecosystem can be depicted within the form of a food pyramid or an energy pyramid the, pyra the food pyramid has a large base vegetation known as producers the pyramid has a narrower middle section that depicts the number and the biomass of herbivorous animals which might be called as first order consumers the apex depicts the small biomass carnivorous animals called second order consumers when plant and animals die the material is back to the soil after being damaged down to simpler substances by means of decomposers including bugs bac bacteria worms fungi so that the plant life can take these vitamins via their roots animal excrete waste products after digesting food which goes back to the soil this links the energy cycle so simple words energy from the sun is consumed by plants the plants will take out vitamins from the soil 
and the sunlight and produce food in the form of which is explained to, uh, above uh, fruits plant, uh, leaves etc these are consumed by herbivorous animals and herbivorous animals are consumed by carnivorous animals so they both excrete and those material will go to soil in soil we have decomposers these decomposers will produce a vitamins and other thing essential components required by the plants so it will go back to plants so there is a cycle between plant first order consumer second order consumer decomposer and sap is consumed by plant in axis ecological succession is a process through which ec ecosystem tends to transform over a period of time succession can be related to seasonal environmental changes which create adjustments in the community of plant life and animals residing in the surroundings there is a tendency for success and to produce more or less stable state at the end of the successional stages the successive levels are associated with manner wherein strength flows via organic system so in simple words ecological succession is a evolution of environment so here we have two types of successions that is primary and secondary so the first set of images and that is the top row tells about the primary succession and below is the secondary succession so what happens in the primary uh, primary succession so in the primary section succession beginning there will be nothing there will be a bare rocks then the colonized by pioneer species so some form of species maybe a pollen or a bacteria or a fungi comes into that position and this uh, it starts occupying the region and then decomposition creates a layer of top soil so those occupied will convert this rock into a soil so the soil creation takes place after that the small species of plants will grow on that soil then it grows into a bushes and then finally a perfect environment is created that is by forming a forest or a tree like structures so here the first here the primary succession is completed so from nothing to a forest in secondary so think that there is a forest due to some reasons the forest got forest fire and that it got it got completely destroyed so again it's something like a bare rock that is the beginning of the primary succession so at this stage there will be nothing so every biomass has been destroyed but this will go as the time goes and there will be a production and the soil gets better some form of bacteria or the plants or pollen will get there and hence again the evolution of forest starts and finally the forest is back so at there is there may be a stage where the forest will remain stable for longer time so in simple words this is ecological succession that is evolution of ecosystem food chain so first thing is first food chain and food web are, are similar but they are strange or different things so the transfer of energy from source in plants through a series of organisms by eating and being eaten constitutes a food chain so that is a circle these food chains are not isolated sequences but are interconnected with each other this inter interlocking pattern is known as food web each step of the food web is called tropic levels these tropic levels together form ecological pyramid so we can see a food chain in the first image but it's not it should uh, it is not meant to be like that only so there may be a interconnection also uh, because all can eat a frog also all can eat a grasshopper so this is called food web so when there is no interconnection it's a food chain when there is a interconnection it is a food web so let me look uh, it's a very simple one everyone knows that how a food chain works grasshopper as uh, plants grow and then plants we have grasshopper from grasshopper frog frog to snake snake to owl then snake uh, everything will die and form produce a de by from decomposer things uh, vitamins are produced which will go to plants and circle continues in food web we can see that there is a cross connection eagle can eat rat also eagle can eat snake also eagle can eat wolf also eagle can eat frog also so this is cross uh, interconnection so this is food web what we have in the beginning that is the basic one is food chain with interconnection and interlocking system it is food web so next comes the food pyramid that is eco so ecological pyramid as explained in the energy flow so initially lights will be consumed by primary producers that is plants 
from plants it goes to primary consumers that is vegetarian animals and from vegetarian we then have secondary consumers that is snakes or small animals which uh, which, which feed on small insects and small animals from there we have tertiary which are carnivores so by this way food chain uh, food food energy in the form of food transfer from one species to other so this can uh, this uh, forms a energy pyramid or ecological pyramid So next is types of ecosystem. So this is one set of very important questions. So let us start with forest ecosystem. Forests are formed by community of plants which are predominantly structurally defined by its trees, shrubs, climbers and ground covers. The forest ecosystem has two parts, the non-living or abiotic aspects of the forest. The type of the forest depends upon the abiotic conditions at the site. Vegetation is specific to the amount of rainfall and the local temperature which varies according to the latitude and longitude. So the what type of forests are present it also depends on which region it is present in. So in the desert region the forest will be different in the rain uh, in the tropical regions where there is a heavy rain the forest will be different. Then we have living and bi biotic aspects of the forest. The plants and the animals form communities that are specific to uh, each forest type. The biotic components includes both large and microscopic plants and animals. So, the, uh, the what are the trees which are grown in this fo forest is different from the other forest uh, so that we can make out which set of forest has been grown here. And similarly, the animals. Some animals are found in some particular form a uh, type of forest and other animals are particular to some particular type of forest so let us look into the types of forest that is types of forest ecosystem forest in india can be broadly divided into coniferous and broadleaf forest coniferous coniferous forest grow in the himalayan mountain region where the temperatures are low the forests have tall stately trees with needle like leaves and downward sloping branches so that the snow can slip off the branches so as we can see in many movies and other photos here in the image also we can see that uh, this like something is like a christmas tree all these trees are found in the himalayan regions so these trees are adopted to grow in the region where there is snowfall so that the snow will not stick to the plants it will just drop off easily and the leaves of the trees are also in the needle shape so that they will not produce uh, provide a uh, much of a surface area for the holding of snow so that the snow will easily fall onto the ground so this is about coniferous forest forest and next we have broadleaf forest broadleaf forest they have several types such as evergreen forest deciduous forest mangrove forest Broadleaf forest have a large leaf of various shapes. So in broadleaf forest, there may be a many types of trees and plants grown, and these broadleaf forests are again classified depending on the regions they are found. So let us continue with the types of broadleaf forest. So first one is evergreen forest. As the name says, uh, these forests are always dense with the plants which are green throughout the year as the rainfall in this region are high and it somehow remains somewhat remains throughout the year evergreen forest grow in the high rainfall areas of the western ghats northeastern india and the andaman and nicobar islands these forests grow in areas where the monsoon lasts for several months there is no dry leaf less face as in the deciduous forest and evergreen forest thus looks green throughout the year trees overlap with each other to form a continuous canopy there was very little sunlight penetrates down to the forest floor so uh, inside these forests always always there will be a most most of the days there will be a darkness even the sunlight uh, will not penetrate to the ground through the forest to reach the ground also it there will be a lots of cloudy around the forest so next comes is the deciduous forest so in the if you can see in the first two images it's evergreen forest and the bottom two images are about deciduous forest so in simple words deciduous forest they shade their leaves during summer and winter seasons 
Deciduous forests are found in the regions with moderate amount of seasonal rainfall that last for only a few months. The deciduous trees shed their leaves during the winter and hot summer months. The forest frequently has thick undergrowth as light can penetrate easily on the forest floor. So this there will not be much of a greenery in the deciduous forest. So they as these shed their leaves in the samba it's just looked like a burnt out burnt out forest but in the during the rainy season they all just just green up and it may look like a, a good forest but still there will be a lots of sunlight and we can walk through easily inside these forests next one is thorn forest are found so these are found in the semi arid regions of india the trees which are sparsely distributed are surrounded by open grassy areas thorny plants are able to conserve water so this is like a desert but with a small amount of plants we can see it in the somewhere in the deccan plateaus and also in the rajasthan all those some kind of a desert regions or dry lands so it's like a high school boys beard it's a patches and then we have mangrove forest so mangrove forest grow along the coast especially in the river deltas these plants are able to grow in mix of saline and fresh water they grow luxuriantly in muddy areas covered with slit that rivers are brought down the mangrove trees have breathing roots that emerge from the mouth of the banks so this is one of the largest biomass so these are these can these trees can live in both saline and fresh water so as we see in the end of the movie life of the pi so what we see there those kind of forest are the mangrove forest so these can be found in the river deltas and the largest is in the ganges delta which is known as sundarbans so this can also be found in the what we say andaman and nicoba so just look at all the images of all the forest ecosystems try to make out your own words and just main important thing is side headings evergreen deciduous thorn mangrove inside that inside that write your own words what you understand seeing these images so let us continue with the topic conservation of forest ecosystem the forest can be conserved only when its resources are used carefully this can be done by using alternative sources of energy instead of pure wood there is a need to grow more trees than cut down from the forest every year for the timber afforestation needs to be done continuously from which fuel wood and timber can be judiciously used natural forest with all their diverse species must be protected as natural parks and wildlife sanctuaries where all plants and animals can be preserved so there is there has been always a need for conservation forest because we are always destroying the forest so forest ecosystem needs to be there in order to prevent many of the disasters which are happening even in nowadays we can see landslides all these are happening because the forest has been completely destroyed so for that reason we have to make effort we have to take the action such as afforestation and all those things we have to make use of make a better use of which is also a lesser use of forest products so next type of ecosystem is grassland ecosystem a wide range of landscape in which vegetation is mainly formed by grasses and small annual plants from a variety of grassland ecosystem with their specific plants and animals form a variety of grassland ecosystem grasslands cover areas where rainfall is usually low and the soil depth or the quality is poor the low rainfall prevents the growth of a large number of trees and shrubs but it is sufficient for the support of growth of grass cover during the monsoon each grassland ecosystem has a variety of species of grass and herbs so let us look into the types of grasslands so we have himalayan so here we'll be coming from north to south so first we have himalayan pasture belt it extends up to the snow line the grasslands at low, lower level form a patches along with coniferous or broadleaf forest the himalayan pastures have a large variety of grasses and herbs there are also large number of medicinal plants so these are the patches of grasses which are grown near the 
foothills of the Himalayan mountains. So as we come down a little we have Terai. This consists of patches of tall grasslands interspersed with the sal forest ecosystem. The patches or the tall elephant grass are located in low-lying waterlogged areas. The sal forest patches cover the elevated regions and the Himalayan foothills. The terra also include marshes in a low-lying depressions. This ecosystem extends as a belt south of the Himalayan foothills. So as we come down a little from the south of uh, Himalayan pasture belts. We get a sal, so, uh, we get a sal forest, and in the, in between those sal forest, we have terai grasslands. So as we can see in the images, these are the gra grasslands which have not elements as shown in the figure, but the tall grasses which are called elephant grasses. Uh, they look like somewhat like a sugar cane, but they are called elephant grasses. So this type of grassland is called as the terai. So we you can make the dif make out the difference in the images so let us move to the next type of grassland next grassland is semi arid plains this is located in western india central india and deccan are covered by grassland tracks with patches of thorn forest and are covered with seasonal grasses and herbs on which its fauna is dependent so as i told as i told before it's a teenager's beard so there will be a grasslands and there will be a patches of some plants so it's somewhat similar to the the thorn forest so there will be almost a dry land all, uh, throughout the year then comes a shola grassland so this is still lower that is in the western ghats region the shola grassland it consists of patches on a hill slopes along with the shola forest on the western ghats nilgiri and anamalai regions this forms a patchwork of grassland on slopes and forest habitats along the stream of low lying area. So these are like lawn, so a flat gre green region which make out a good spot for the tourism. So these are called Shola grassland. So make again make a look into the all the photos and try to make out the difference. Importantly write the side headings and inside those side headings write your own words. Conservation of grassland ecosystem. The grassland should not be overgrazed and the areas of grassland should be closed for grazing. A part of the grassland in an area must be closed every year so that the rotational grazing pattern is established. Fires must be prevented and rapidly controlled to protect the most of the natural undistributed grassland ecosystem. Sanctuaries and natural parks must be created. So we know how to create the grassland but why? So the grasslands has to be protected because they prevent landslides and they stop much of the water so that we will get lots of underground water so that the uh, ecosystem is uh, will follow its cycle continuously. So for that reason we have to save our grasslands and we have to make a, a we have to follow some methods in order to uh, safeguard our grassland system. Next we have desert ecosystem. Desert and semi-arid areas are located in western India and the Deccan Plateau. The climate in these vast tracts are extremely dry. These are sand dunes and there are also areas covered with sparse grasses and few which grow it if it rains. The rainfall is scant scanty and sporadic that is periodic which is not a regular rain, rainy season. In, the, in an area it may rain only once very few years, desert and semi-arid regions have number of highly specialized insects and reptiles. So there is not much of a biotic life form in the deserts and just that, sim, uh, just uh, look into the types of the desert, there, uh, I have not tried to explain, just as you can see the images, you'll, you can write it in your own words. So first we have hot and dry deserts, so as in the name said, it's a hot and very dry. So there will not be even a drop of a water in those deserts which can be seen at the middle of the uh, continent or a country like a Gobi desert in China and then we have coastal deserts. So the desert which is near to the coastal but still there is not there will not be any form of any kind of a life form in those deserts. Then we have semi arid deserts so like Apache and then we have cold deserts. So cold deserts will have white sands so there is a white sand desert in india near the himalayas 
so it is similar to that the weather will be very cold but still it's a desert so just look at the images try to make if the question is asked try to make out your own words but most probably there will not be a question from this part even though it's a four mark question next one and the final one is aquatic ecosystem the aquatic ecosystem constitutes the marine environment of the seas and the freshwater systems like lakes rivers ponds and wetlands these ecosystem provide human beings with the wealth of natural resources the aquatic ecosystems are the classified into freshwater brackish and marine ecosystem which are based on the salinity levels so first let us look into the freshwater ecosystem they have running water streams and the rivers ponds tanks lakes are the ecosystems where the water doesn't flow and have expenses of shallow water with the aquatic vegetation which forms an ideal habitat for fish protection and water birds so simple words a freshwater ecosystem where the water salinity is very low and uh, it's a drinkable water like river ponds so on so they have specific vegetation and the animals which live on those rivers so the plant animals or the fishes which are found in the fresh water cannot live in the ocean or the salt water then we have marine ecosystem so this is one of the largest ecosystem in the world it has one of the largest oxygen product providing source and it has the most living beings in it that is marine ecosystem which has high saline level so this is simply in words ocean and then we have brackish water so fresh water and marine water sorry fresh water ecosystem and marine water ecosystem will come connect at some particular points so the rivers will flow and just join the ocean and that in those particular region where the river joins the ocean is a mixture of saline water and the fresh water so such region is called brackish water ecosystem so brackish water ecosystem in river deltas are covered by mangrove forest and are among the world's most productive ecosystem in terms of biomass the largest mangrove swamps are in the sundarbans in the deltas of ganges so as ex, uh, as while explaining the mangrove forest as i said it can uh, fi- we can find the mangrove forest in both salt water and in uh, fresh water so this is that situation so the mangrove forests are found in the brackish water ecosystem so by this we'll complete the complete ecosystem module so as i told which are the important questions please go through them just try to understand the theory part and the words and the situation which the cycle and all those ecosystems are lying and importantly note down the side headings if you know the side headings inside you can write in your own words and you can score well side headings drawings differences and your imagination is what's going to give you marks in this particular module so all the best i will be coming back with the next module see you guys in the next video thank you for watching this video